What's up you guys? Welcome to Egypt. We are so excited to be here. We are going to be exploring all of the incredible pyramids here, going inside the Great Pyramid, and so much more. Make sure you stick around. What's up everybody? Welcome to our beautiful Cairo hotel room. <laughs> We are in Egypt, guys. It has been an absolute whirlwind the past couple of weeks. We left Italy and we had a little bit of downtime in the beautiful London, England. And I will say it was a blast. We've been there before. If you guys haven't seen them, we have videos from almost three and a half years ago when we went through England, toured London, did all that cool stuff. But we kind of took it easy, guys. We put the cameras down for a little bit. We caught up on a ton of editing. We did have a little bit of fun while we were in London, though. We went and saw Hamilton, which was a ton of fun. We've seen it now in New York City, Salt Lake City, and London. It was awesome. Honestly, it was, it was good. awesome. It's been good everywhere we've seen it. We got a lot of stuff done, and we got a lot of stuff planned. We literally have our next almost over a month planned, which is incredible. Which is kind of rare for us. <laughs> it was a much needed break, if you will, workation, I don't know, whatever the kids are calling it these days. It wasn't really a break, though. We were so exhausted, but that's okay, because we are waking up on our first morning here in Cairo and we are so excited to be here. It was a little bit of an impulse thing. It was all of a sudden like, let's go to Egypt and then all of a sudden, hello, we're here. It's gonna be incredible. We left Heathrow yesterday, got into Cairo last night and today starts a solid week long tour of this country and we couldn't be more stoked about it, guys. Let's get it started. First stop for the day is the Egyptian Museum here in Cairo. This place is unbelievable. Just walking through the front door, you're just bombarded with sarcophaguses, coffins, all sorts of really awesome Egyptian stuff. Right here, we have a ton of sarcophaguses, which are these big stone tombs that people were buried in. And then back there along the back wall, you see all the coffins. So after a person was embalmed, they would be put in the coffin, and they would actually carve the coffin's face to look like the person that is inside. That way the soul can recognize that that is the body, that it was with here on this earth when they're reunited once again. So it's kind of cool that each coffin is uniquely carved to look like the person that occupying it. Then after that, it gets put into this massive, extremely heavy sarcophagus where they are buried and left. This is amazing, guys. We barely scratched the surface here in the museum. There's so many artifacts, including King Tut's sarcophagus, which I hear is upstairs. Let's go check it out. We're just coming out of the Egyptian Museum and it's still early in the day and I'm already exhausted. Like, I feel like I just took a very intense course in Egyptian history and my brain hurts. We're with our tour guide Fadis today and he is a well of knowledge. And I feel like I'm usually the one with the random questions. Daniel's questions are much more intelligent. Mine are just really random. And he'll just have the answer like immediately. It's insane. It was so cool seeing everything in there, especially everything to do with King Tut. Obviously, that was my favorite part. Everyone has heard of King Tut, but we didn't really know why he was so famous. He became king when he was nine, and he actually died when he was 18. He only ruled for about nine years. I don't know that he actually did that much while he lived. I can't imagine. Why does everyone know his name, and why is he so famous? And the answer is because his tomb was completely untouched, unlooted. No one had found it. No one had stolen anything. And it was discovered 100 years ago in 1922 by an American archaeologist. Everything inside of it is tomb, everything that was in there, completely untouched. It's insane, you guys. They just celebrated the 100th year of finding King Tut, which is so cool. And everything was like solid gold. That was another reason that it was like so rare and so famous and beautiful because it was absolutely untouched and everything was solid gold. <laughs> and it's just in this museum. That's another thing that kind of blows my mind, blows both of our mind, I think, about this museum, is we were like, you know, museums in America that we've been to, 
it'll have like nine inches of like bulletproof glass that these artifacts are behind and here I mean you can just like touch it it's crazy I know it was kind of cool I told our tour guide this is kind of awesome you know I can just reach out and touch all these stone sarcophaguses and all that stuff I was like I don't feel like you could do that in the US he's like well they've been here for thousands of years what are you gonna do to it you know? yeah he was like they've lasted thousands of years I don't think that you touching it is gonna do anything and we we're like okay good point I agree. unfortunately in the King Tut's portion we aren't allowed to video it was very dark very air-conditioned there's much more security there preserving much more there so unfortunately we weren't able to get any footage of in there but you guys just add Egypt to your bucket list and go see King Tut's get up because it's pretty awesome we did see a lot of the things that were in his tomb though his throne was made out of solid gold, solid gold. oh my gosh that thing was cool it looked very uncomfortable but very hey, uncomfortable. when you're nine years old <laughs> We also saw when they do the embalming process, they actually take all your organs out and they store them in jars. Oh my gosh. And they have the jars that held his internal organs in there. They're beautiful, like made out of alabaster. And you can actually see the blood that is dripped onto them and like run down the sides. Like literally, his blood. My mind was having a hard time comprehending that. And then those jars were put inside this solid gold case that was right next to it. Like and the case is monstrous. Daniel and me could fit in there like three times. The case is huge, that just his organs go in. I cannot believe all the effort, all the money, all the gold, all the craftsmanship that goes into burying a king. It's insane. A lot of work. Anyways guys, the museum was epic. There's more stuff we want to share with you from there, but we're going to do it in a little bit different location. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's big. Well, lunch is served. We just got to the restaurant here. I actually don't know the name of it. I apologize. We'll find that out. It has the most insane view to my right here of the pyramids. Like literally staring at the pyramids. Like the Sphinx I feel, is watching you eat. Yeah, he's yeah. literally staring at me as I eat this bird yeah. that I had no idea was going to be an entire bird. <laughs> and my rice is in the shape of a pyramid. <laughs> We have arrived at the Great Pyramids here in Giza. <laughs> this is the Great Pyramid right behind us, and then there are two more. We're gonna go check all of them out. We're even gonna go inside the Great Pyramid right here. I didn't even know you could go inside. I didn't either, but we're going to now. <laughs> This is insane. If you struggle with claustrophobia, do not go inside the Great Pyramid of Giza. <laughs> this ramp is nuts. Alright, this portion is opened up a ton. It's really tall. I think all the way to the outer wall of the pyramid. Still on a ramp though. About at the top. It is hot in here. We are sweating big time. The only thing in here is this empty sarcophagus at the top of the Great Pyramid. We just popped out of the Grand Pyramid. This one right here. Is my <laughs> finger on top of it? Which one, Shell? That one. This one? <laughs> 
Guys, I had no idea you could even go in that thing and we went in it and we went all the way to the top on those ramps and holy smokes, there was no airflow in there. Believe no, not. no airflow. Sorry, we're gonna get hit by camels here. There was no airflow in there. Oh my gosh, we were dripping in sweat. I still am, still haven't cooled down. The breeze hits and it feels so good, but then the breeze goes away and you wanna die again. The temperature's actually not bad here, no, but after being in there, it's like, so hot. I can't believe anyone would come here in like June, July, August. Oh it would be gosh. so hot. Sweltering. Tourism isn't very popular here in the super hot July, August months, and I can see why. We're just walking around the pyramid there. We've got more pyramids that way. It is absolutely incredible, guys. This is really kind of cool. I always have thought the pyramids were always kind of terrace. You know, they're made up of millions. I think this one's 2.3 million massive blocks of stone. And it looks kind of terraced, but back when they were first built, they were completely smooth. You can kind of see around the base, there's a smooth layer of stone that's angled. And you can and see it at the top of the second one it's also. It's also on the top of this one, yeah. A lot it of it had has like been an encasing. But you can see it at the top of that one, all along the base of the Great Pyramid here. But a lot of it is missing. A lot of it fell down during earthquakes hundreds of years ago. And a lot of it has been taken and used on buildings in Cairo, which obviously they do not allow anymore. No. It happened a long time ago. So guys, these pyramids were built nearly 4,000 years ago. A long time ago. And what is crazy, the three main ones here, we have this one, the great one, that one, and then you see there's a smaller one. It's kind of hidden by that one right now. But they were built by the grandfather, his son, and then his son. Three generations of rulers here in Egypt built these pyramids, and here the three stand today. Right on the outskirts of the city. That's something else I think is so cool. It's right there. It just ends, and then they have the plateau up here in Giza, and this is where the pyramids and the Sphinx all sit, right on the outskirts of the city. It's unbelievable. As we were driving in, you could see the pyramids between buildings and stuff as we were crossing roads. What an unbelievable view to have from your city. These monsters. <laughs> we made it down to see the Sphinx. He is incredibly cool, guys. Face of a man, body of a lion, right in front of the pyramids. Something cool about the pyramids, guys, they built them exactly north, south, east, west. I don't know how they did it. They have the Sphinx perfectly positioned in front of this pyramid right there. It's like unbelievable the things that they were able to do thousands Way back of then. years ago. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't even do it now. Today has been incredibly awesome, guys. The sun is starting to go down, as you can see back there. We are absolutely exhausted. You would have thought we caught a red eye from the US <laughs> yesterday. All we did was fly a few hours from London but I am so exhausted right now. I'm gonna go back, head to the van, head back into Cairo. And just like that, we're back at the airport. From the pyramids to the airport, you guys, today has been a day full of so much history, so much adventure, so much sightseeing. We are exhausted, but the day is not over. We're hopping on a flight right now to fly to a new city here in Egypt. Yes, the day is not over and the trip is not over, guys. No, not we are going to be seeing <laughs> a lot of Egypt over the next few days, so definitely subscribe, stay with us. Jumping on our flight right now, flying south to Aswan. We'll see you guys there. All right, we have just checked into the Moven Pick Hotel here in Aswan. And go figure, guys, it's on a little island right in the middle of the Nile River. <laughs> we had the quick flight from Cairo down here to Aswan. Just boarded. We're at the very back in the aisles. And then we took a van here to the city where we then hopped on a boat to go across the Nile in the dead of night, which was pretty awesome. It was really cool. At that point, we hopped on a golf cart where they brought us up to the hotel. A lot of different forms of transportation were taken to get to this hotel. And the truth is, we couldn't be happier to be here right now. We need to shower and go to bed. We are so exhausted. And we have another incredibly full day that starts again tomorrow, bright and early. You said it. <laughs> You guys are not gonna wanna miss it. It's going to be incredible and we will see you then. <laughs>